We've talked before about the story of P.A. Lutte and his pioneering of open source DIY firearms. His work was revolutionary in protecting the right to bear arms from those who would leave you defenseless. But there was a snag. It was kind of hard to actually build at home without getting caught. Because buying a lathe and a block of aluminium would just get you put straight on a list. But where there's a will, there's a way, and while it may not be what Uncle Ted would have wanted, F's in the chat boys, the march of technological progress stops for no man, as long as you don't ask it to draw hands. So, we are now on the cusp of a new frontier in gunsmithing, where the question of anonymity and suspicious shopping lists appears to have been settled. Last time we said, you wouldn't download a gun. Well, you wouldn't print one either now, would you? Many of you will know Ian from Forgotten Weapons as Gun Jesus. And while that is certainly apt, I believe that there is someone else who is also worthy of that title, in a much more literal sense. Someone who dedicated his life to providing us with our salvation and spreading the word of his works, which courted a lot of controversy until he was killed by an uppity, petty and power-mad cabal for his trouble. Allegedly. The Steve Jobs of 3D printed guns. Jay Stark. Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. <coughs> but before we get started, this video is brought to you by Raycon. With the last of that annoying cold weather wearing away, it's never been a better time to go outside. To get those steps in, for your fitness of course, and if you're like me, you need a soundtrack for your inspirational workout in the urban sprawl. And that is where Raycon comes in. Raycon are the premier earbuds. With 32 hours of battery life and 8 hours of playtime, you can go on that long jaunt down the countryside without needing to worry about recharging. What's that? The local youths acting up and beatboxing or something? Don't sweat it, because with Raycon specialised noise isolation, their sick beats won't intrude upon yours. But it doesn't end there. With Raycon specialised gel tips, they will rest naturally and comfortably in your ears, and they won't jiggle about and pull you out of the music. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, Raycons are not able to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with major brands in terms of audio quality, but they're able to do so at an affordable price. I'm saying all of this with confidence because I use my Raycons daily, whether that be for my walks, work, or just to lounge around. So, if you want to finally commit to those fitness goals, feel free to click the link down in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash dankula to get 20% off of your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. J. Stark 1809 named himself after the American officer and veteran of the Revolutionary War, Major General John Stark, who notably said, live free or die in 1809. Though, our man did not often quote his namesake directly. Live free or fucking die. Little was known about Jay Stark because considering the nature of his hobby, he didn't want anyone knowing anything about him. But his funny and slightly scuffed accent did give away the fact that he was unfortunate enough to be European. Despite the fact that his voice was distorted to protect his identity. But there was one thing that he was very, very, very open about. His absolutist stance on the human rights to freedom of speech and the right to bear arms. Which he ever so articulately explained by saying, We want everyone to have the freedom of speech and the right to bear arms. If that's too politically extreme for you, fuck yourself. Yes, Jay Stark was a very, very, very big proponent of self-defence and fighting tyranny. 
but ideological convictions can only get one so far. Passion is also very important for making a splash in any space, so Jay Stark was also motivated by the simple fact that firearms are just a really fun hobby. He was really into firearms just for their own sake, thinking that their workings and history were just really neat. Which is obvious from the very fact that Jay Stark was a man. I'm assuming that his journey as a gun enthusiast started very early in his childhood, in the same way as every other young boy. Having ancestral memories of glorious warfare awakened by finding a curved stick in the woods, saying, Hell yeah, and then knowing exactly what to do with it. It sounds like a really fucking stupid hobby to have outside of, and probably even inside of, the United States, where the stakes of getting caught are so high. But Jay Stark often alluded to having a difficult personal background and nothing to really live for. We'll get into why that might be later, but having a bit of a self-destructive mindset made the risk of getting caught and going away for a very, very long time a lot easier to swallow, since Jay Stark didn't believe that he had anything to lose. And a man with nothing to lose can become very, very dangerous indeed. But not in Jay Stark's case. With gun control running rampant and Second Amendment rights being eroded because leftists lack the reading comprehension to understand that well-regulated is old-timey speak for in working order rather than sanctioned and subject to government bureaucracy, which is the opposite of a fucking right, but anyway, Jay Stark was in the perfect position to do something to level the playing field in the fight for gun rights. He was inspired by Defence Distributed's Liberator, which was the first 3D printed firearm to take off. But despite being a decent proof of concept, Jay Stark wasn't very impressed. But being the first of its kind, the Liberator is not very reliable or robust. And being single shot isn't particularly ideal for a self-defence situation. So, after learning CAD, Jay Stark also noticed that the models for all of the parts weren't very well made, and the Liberator was somewhat liable to just fucking exploding in your hands. So, Jay Stark passed on all of this constructive criticism to Cody Wilson, the founder of Defence Distributed. But Jay Stark was told, fix it yourself. And Jay Stark really wanted a 3D printed firearm that could go toe to toe with the real thing. So Jay Stark just said, okay. This throwing down of the gauntlet actually resulted in plans for Jay Stark to meet and collaborate with Cody Wilson, but the idea fell apart when the latter was charged for having, let's just say, a rather libertarian taste in women. Not, not that one, eh. Uh, uh, the bad one. <laughs> However, just for fairness, the jury is still out on the Cody Wilson thing because a lot of people believe that his whole arrest was a giant plant and psyop by the CIA to try and destroy him because they really didn't like the fact that he was encouraging people and giving them the means to make untraceable firearms, which is absolutely a thing the CIA definitely would do and definitely has done before. So, there is a lot of uncertainty about the whole Cody Wilson thing, and I just wanted to make you aware of that for fairness. But his arrest didn't deter Jay Stark, and he set out to continue Wilson's work on his own, despite having no technical background or prior expertise. He simply taught himself CAD, 3D printing, and gunsmithing using internet tutorials and a little help from the online community that was starting to form around him in the absence of Cody Wilson. This community coalesced into a collective named Deterrence Dispensed, which Jay Stark founded alongside a partner named Ivan the Troll. The name was a deliberate nod to Defence Distributed. But this wasn't a group in the traditional sense. It was very, very important to Jay Stark and Ivan that Deterrence Dispensed was decentralised, because as Ivan explained, we don't share our real identities or real locations with each other. We don't have any one location or base of operation. None of the developers are necessarily dependent on one another. 
This allows deterrence dispense to essentially operate like a hydra in the event that a deplatforming or raid happens and does away with the need for aggressive gatekeeping. After all, it's very hard to vet 10,000 members who are based and red-pilled all over the world. Deterrence Dispensed was set up in a way that was perfect for Jay Stark to spread his message and designs as far and wide as possible, without worrying about infiltration. After all, firearms are a human right, so this project wasn't just for our guys, it was for everyone. March 2020 was a very creative time for most people. But while most people took up hobbies like guitar, crocheting, mass formation psychosis, or baking, Jay Stark took up wildly illegal gunsmithing, with the main goal of solving a problem that had plagued the scene since 2013. Sourcing parts. All of the 3D printed firearms on the market still required the purchase of barrels, magazines and triggers, which are very, very heavily regulated in Europe and therefore a massive security liability for any budding gunsmith. But Jay Stark managed to fix that. Behold, the Fuck Gun Control 9mm, abbreviated to the FGC9. It is semi-automatic, chambered in 9mm, takes standard magazines and only weighs a couple of kilos because it is 80% 3D printed. And while the barrel and a couple of other bits do need to be made of metal because boomsticks get hot, the FGC9 was designed in a way where these metal parts aren't traditional gun parts. So every component can be easily fabricated or purchased, even the barrel. As long as you are not dumb enough to get caught, you can get your hands on this bad boy in Bongland. And because you can get all of the plastic bits from your local B&Q, home hardware or wherever else you go to gear up for getting dad pilled in the garden. But, because there are some metal components, the FGC9 can still be picked up by a metal detector. Which is good news for Americans, because the fact that a metal detector can pick it up, the FGC9 is perfectly legal. Depending on the state, and also depending on you telling daddy government all about it. Cuck. All in all, making an FGC9 is pretty cheap and easy, with the DRM-free open source files also including documents such as instructions and a handy tutorial on producing homemade ammunition to get around the purchasing restrictions in Europe. Jay Stark was able to build this in a goon cave with a lump of plastic. <laughs> it takes less than two weeks to put all of this together and it costs less than a thousand dollars for all of the materials, parts and tools that you need to make it. And once one has all of the tools, each build after that only gets cheaper. And you get a lot of bang for your buck, because the FGC9 is surprisingly robust. It can pump out over 2,000 rounds with solid accuracy and without any wear and tear. And because they are made under the radar, FGC9s are not issued with serial numbers. So, they are completely untraceable. As Jay Stark bragged, we fucked gun control for good. Gun control is dead, and we killed it. And, thanks to the power of the internet and cheap equipment and materials, anyone could have one of these bad boys. It could be you. It could be me. It could even be... That's... That's my lawyer. <laughs> I have to take this. It could not be me. It has never been me, and it will not ever be me in future. I have no intention whatsoever of building a big not-so-iron. But while I am a massive pussy, Jay Stark took his ideals of free speech and firearms rights very, very seriously, to the point of being very willing to die for them. But he didn't really care about much beyond that. Politically, Jay Stark was actually quite mild, not that the media would tell you that. Jay Stark didn't like racists, xenophobes, sexists, or extremists, you know, some of my favourite people, but not everyone's perfect, and he also banned any such activity from all of the channels and platforms that he ran. 
Deterrence dispensed also took a general position against discussing ideology and politics because it was cringe and annoying and not really related to the hobby. And all of the arguing got in the way of talking about firearms, which was the reason everyone was there. Of course, there was plenty of peril clutching about the fact that some of these anons could be an ISIS or any other extremist group, with no way of finding out for sure because Fed posting isn't allowed in general. But that was a risk that Jay Stark was willing to take because liberty was much more important to him than the feeling of security. After all, he couldn't be held personally responsible with what people do with their own private property. You can't kill someone with a PDF, so his conscience was clear. As he made clear in a Der Spiegel interview, even if there had to be a lot of bloodshed to maintain the right to bear arms, I would still do it. Speaking of media interviews, most of you probably know Jay Stark as the subject of a documentary uploaded to YouTube in November of 2020 titled Plastic Defence, which was created by Jake Hanrahan, formerly of Vice. Remember when Vice was good? But anyway, Plastic Defence blessed us with this clip of Jay Stark saying, I am extremely peaceful while going through the motions of racking around, which quite rightfully so, uh, ended up becoming a big meme. You know, something something duality of man. The documentary showed us the FGC9 in action, and as much of the manufacturing process as Hanrahan could get away with putting on YouTube. And interviews exploring j Stark's philosophy, motivations and modus operandi, which we've already discussed. The documentary is a really good display of what the FGC-9 could do, as well as an interesting look into the thought and manufacturing processes of the man himself. Naturally, there was a good bit of spirited debate about the merits of what Jay Stark was doing. Not perfect, neither party really argued their cases as well as they probably could have. Lots of straw men and whataboutism with Jay Stark's lack of vetting over who joins deterrence dispensed and the question of his responsibility of what people might do with their FGC 9s. But you can hardly blame Hanrahan for wanting to probe Jay Stark's morals when he is most certainly on several lists himself just for having met Jay Stark. And firearms are generally a really weirdly touchy subject for a lot of British people. Overall, the documentary is a very good one. It's good to see how passionate Jay Stark was about his cause and his craft, and while he did butt heads with Jay Stark a little, Hanrahan didn't smear him at all, and very clearly argued in good faith. Very, very rare behaviour these days. Whether you agree with his takes or not, Hanrahan does deserve big props for having the balls to put this whole documentary together, especially since Jay Stark didn't really have the best grasp on gun safety. That would kill someone. That could kill a lot. Oh, just like this. Got peppered with casings. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> just like that, yep. Overall, Plastic Defence is very much worth watching in full, and I do recommend that you all check it out. As you would have noticed, Jay Stark took great care to protect his identity, being completely covered head to toe in black. And even though he covered his face with a balaclava and sunglasses, Hanrahan still pixelated the lenses just in case. But despite everything, this OPSEC measure might have been Jay Stark's undoing. Because you see, eBay and Coinbase were tracking Jay Stark's purchases. Allegedly. A, a, big, a big allegedly there because neither company has admitted to it, nor would they ever, but allegedly eBay and Coinbase either noticed some suspicious transactions and decided to report it to the feds, or they were asked by the feds for all of the information they had on JSTARK and they handed it over. Allegedly. But after that point, the German federal police did the rest. With the cops on to him, it seemed like Jay Stark's last stand was on the horizon, and in July of 2021, it was go time. The German equivalent of a SWAT team raided his flat, but instead of finding a very, very angry German man and an entire arsenal pointed at them when they kicked the door down, they only found a 3D printer, a laptop, some hard drives, and a few burner phones. 
The cops found no guns or anything else that is illegal to possess. And Jay Stark was released right after questioning. They had nothing on him. He was free. Right? Well, two days later, Jay Stark was found dead in his car outside of his parents' house. The official investigation uncovered no signs of trauma or foul play, and his cause of death appeared to be a cardiac arrest caused by a congenital heart condition, likely catastrophically flaring up due to the stress of the chicanery that he was going through with the raid. The German publication Der Spiegel said that Jay Stark had a weak heart. However, his friends called bullshit on this and said that he was young and healthy. What 28-year-old dies of a cardiac arrest? Well, to be fair, it was 2021. But anyway, also getting noggins jogging was the awfully convenient and frankly quite ghoulish location where Jay Stark's body was discovered, which made the circumstances of his death very, very suspicious to a lot of people. And I'm sure that you can guess why. Also, in a completely unrelated note, since this is a video about firearms, did you know that the CIA has a heart attack gun? It's a gun that administers a poison that can trigger a heart attack in people. Totally unrelated note, I just thought it was something you should all know. In the wake of his death, Jay Stark was unmasked and his real name was released. Jacob Dugu. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. I probably am, I'm sorry about that, but he was the son of Kurdish parents who fled to Germany from Turkey in the 90s. He was also autistic, which should be a surprise to fucking no one, but in 2015, Jay Stark joined Germany's Bundeswehr as a non-commissioned officer, and as much as he liked his G36, he was reportedly disappointed by the fact that this wasn't an avenue to private gun ownership. You see, much like the rest of Europe, firearms laws are really, really bad in Germany, meaning that they are reserved exclusively for sports shooters and hunters. Gunsmithing is therefore very, very strictly regulated and discouraged with a decade-long prison sentence. These laws left Jay Stark very frustrated as he was stuck shooting what he called unspectacular weapons at disgusting and small shooting ranges. When he would rather set up a range at home and keep enough firearms on hand in case the opportunity arose for a fun night of castle doctrine. After his unmasking and death, the media said some pretty mean things about Jay Stark. You know, incel, racist, sexist, extremist, buzzwords, 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 you know, it's just noise to me now, as well as anonymous posts attributed to him in a report published by the International Centre for the Study of Radicalisation titled Behind the Mask, Uncovering the Extremist Messages of a 3D Printed Gun Designer. Their source... Linguistic analysis, which is very flawed at best, as well as keyword searches on 4chan, Reddit and Twitter. While he was relatively quiet about his personal politics in public, he was allegedly a spicy, spicy boy when posting anonymously. Jay Stark allegedly referred to himself as a kebab remover, which is a rather strange thing for a curd to say. And he also called for the extermination of Muslims, which is another strange thing for a Kurd to say. And then he also compared Turkish people to cockroaches, which is a normal thing for a Kurd to say. But anyway, Jay Stark also fed posted a bunch about the coming boogaloo, as well as shooting leftists and politicians who he referred to as traitors. He also seemed to have a habit of lambasting people as LARPers and vaguely implying that he would put his money where his mouth was, likely referring to the FGC9. The study then claimed that he was anti-Semitic for posting stuff about the Holocaust accompanied with the happy merchant meme, because, of course, the best way to get a measure of a man's real beliefs and politics is the shit that he posts on poll, you know, let's fucking give it up for journalism. However, it is very important to note that these posts were found by linguistic analysis, which is very, very flawed, and it also, the stuff that he posted sounds like everything else on poll. So, there really isn't any 
actual evidence that Jay Stark was in fact the guy who posted these things. But if I'm allowed to put my tinfoil hat on for a little second, he probably didn't post any of these things at all. They're just pulling this linguistic analysis bullshit out of their arse to try and destroy the man's memory after the fact because they don't want people following his message. So they're doing the tried and true technique of, oh, let's just quickly brand him as a racist Nazi anti-Semite so that people will disassociate from him. And we'll wait until after he's dead so the man can't defend himself and deny posting these posts. So, that's what I think happened. Since it is a hot button topic right now, the media also really played up the incel angle. They thought his tism, ethnicity, looks and height scuppered his chances of finding love, as he complained in an alleged post that was found through linguistic analysis, real women are no option for me. Bruh, I have Asperger's and ADHD, look like a 4 out of 10, and can't even manage to attract 2 out of 10 girls. The post that the study dredged up referenced Elliot Roger, related gamer moments, accounts of Jay Stark using prostitutes, thinking about killing himself, so on and so on. You know, every single trope in the book. You know, funny that, that they managed to find all of that stuff. But, of course, the study took all of this cringe posting and ran with the incel narrative. They linked it to his stance on firearms and implied that his feelings of rejection manifested into a desire to commit violence and all of that other stuff, you know. Even though he had the FGC9 for a very, very, very long time and shot exactly zero fucking people. Journalists talk about guns without PP references challenge fucking impossible. For some reason, leftists just cannot fathom any reason for supporting the right to bear arms other than penis compensation. Oh, you like guns? I'm now thinking about your dick. That said, however, Jay Stark did have a solution, you know, not a final one much to journalist disappointment for his incel problem. And it was by far the most right-wing thing about him. Going on holiday to the Philippines to find a girlfriend. Yes, in 2018, Jay Stark went on a trip to Earth's PvP arena to find love. And after complaining about having had no matches on dating apps in months while in Germany, he claimed to have had hundreds of matches after just a few weeks in the Philippines. Which left journalists absolutely fucking seething. Look at the evil incel with his... girlfriend. <laughs> Regardless of how much stock you take in Jay Stark's alleged internet activity, he would have not been the last person to admit that he wasn't really in the best mental state, as he wrote a fair amount about being lonely and depressed. His desire to go out shooting seemed to at least partly come from an inclination of suicide by cop. But when the opportunity arose, he was thankfully in a good enough place to handle the cops safely and smartly. It's just a shame that they may or may not allegedly have got him anyway. But the smears didn't stop with that study. Pretty much every article that I read included a few paragraphs about mass shooters, terrorists and other nerd wells who were caught with FGC9s. Either trying to look fair and balanced and trying really hard to avoid looking like they endorse Jay Stark at best, or tacitly blaming Jay Stark for the heinous crimes committed by other people at worst. The media class seemed to be moving in lockstep in the wake of Jay Stark's unmasking, and a senior research fellow at the International Centre for the Study of Radicalisation, Rajan Basra, had the gall to say, and I quote, he had a huge list of grievances, especially against women and the state, and made threats online. Who knows what may have happened if he had not died when he did. He said he was a ticking time bomb. But there is no doubt that his legacy is the proliferation of these weapons. Who knows what would have happened if he had not died when he did. What a spiteful, petty and frankly fucking evil thing to say. Rajan Basra is a fucking ghoul. 
But even if we do take all of this at face value, even if we act under the assumption that all of those posts really were his internet history and Jay Stark was in fact a psychotic bigot, that doesn't change the fact that while he may or may not have been out of line, we still don't really know, even if he was an absolute maniac, he's still right about gun rights. While it didn't occur in the way that Jay Stark had expected, his death effectively made him a martyr for pretty much everyone in the 3D printing and Second Amendment space, much to the chagrin of their enemies. On the 24th of May 2022, over 20 countries had representatives travel to The Hague to attend the International Conference of 3D Printed Firearms, which was organised by Europol and the Dutch police to try and figure out how to monitor and control the proliferation of 3D printed guns. As you would expect with any case of government boomers trying to deal with the internet, this conference amounted to little more than just coping and seething. It seems like the main approach to dealing with the problem is to simply try and associate 3D printed firearms with far right extremists. Probably because far-left extremists illegally get their hands on traditional guns the old-fashioned way, and then get their bail crowdfunded when they get caught committing crimes with them. However, that's not to say that the authorities aren't trying to round up at least some of these plastic pea shooters though. May 2023 saw the UK's first ever convictions for selling 3D printed firearms after Cebu Sisu Moyo and Christopher Gill got 31 years for making FGC 9s to sell to a gang. Increasing numbers have also been seized by cops across Europe since then, but it's impossible to know how many are actually out there because <laughs> that was the point. Therefore, I do have a feeling that governments are eventually going to either ban 3D printers entirely or introduce strict licenses for their use. They fear him, but it's too late. They may have killed the man, allegedly, but they couldn't kill the idea. Internet autists, particularly J Stark's close colleague Ivan the Troll, continue to develop and improve the FGC9 in his stead, and it's only going to get better and cheaper. In fact, Deterrence Dispensed has gained such a profile that some updated branding was required in 2021. To avoid confusion with Defence Distributed, they changed their name to The Gatalog. Which... <laughs> Which I'm not going to lie, that's, that's pretty good. The FGC9's popularity is only increasing. Its original upload got over 44,000 views and God knows how many times it has been copied and reposted elsewhere. Ammunition is still a bit of an issue in Germany because powder isn't really the easiest thing to come by, but a solution to that is probably one of the jobs in the pipeline. In addition to 3D printed rocket launchers. I know that my audience is pretty widely distributed on the political spectrum and on the other spectrum. Jokes. I wouldn't have you any other way. But no matter what you believe about gun control, self-defence, J Stark's antics or anything else to do with this issue, none of you can look me in the eye and tell me that it's not pretty fucking cool. But until the McRocket launchers arrive, the FGC9 is more than tidying us over. And... It is currently actively being used by rebels in Myanmar, who are being supported in their efforts to print their arsenal by members of the 3D printing community on platforms such as RFOSCAD and Pornhub, of all places. I don't think that's what they mean when they say stay strapped or get clapped, but anyway, despite seeming sceptical about the FGC9's plans being out there doing more good than harm, seeing it in action for its intended purpose in contrast to its media coverage seems to have made an impression on Jake Hanrahan, who said that, and I quote, while 3D printed firearms are generally only reported on in the media when either fascists or gang members use them, the vast majority of examples of real use case of 3D printed guns, specifically the FGC9, is rebels under totalitarian regimes printing them to resist being crushed. And that was the original intention of us having a right to bear arms. It's not so we can hurt each other, it's so we can protect ourselves from governments 
that seek to hurt us. In fact, Hanrahan appears to have come around on the idea entirely, recognising that, and I quote, the FGC-9 is useful for close-quarters guerrilla ambushes, something that we've seen the Myanmar rebels utilise it for. Sure, it's not the most powerful gun, but if your oppressor has guns, it's better than not having a gun. I think it's the most credible real-world implementation of what Jay Stark wanted the FGC-9 to be. He wanted people that are under tyranny, which the rebels that are in Myanmar undoubtedly are under deep tyranny from the military junta there, he wanted people like that to be able to fight back in some small way. Because the people who fear guns the most are totalitarian and authoritarian regimes. That's why guns are the first thing they come for, because an unarmed population is much easier to exploit and torture. After the guns go, the rights soon follow. Because what the fuck are you going to do about it? And that is what Jay Stark would have wanted. People having the means on hand to fight against oppressive regimes at all times. As the man himself warned time and time again, Look at Nazi Germany. Do you want to get carted off in rail cars and get gassed and killed because one year ago you said, no, I don't want these criminals or my neighbour to have a firearm? Just look at the Uyghurs in China. Nobody is helping them. Nobody does shit. You know what would help them? If they were armed. However, you can't win them all though. The FGC-9 has been adopted by Islamic extremists and Irish Republicans, which is kind of a win. I mean, <laughs> that was a joke. But while that may not be what Jay Stark had in mind, he saw it as the price of freedom. It's better to be on even footing with your enemies in the arms race and be able to take your own safety into your own hands than to be completely impotent and at the mercy of both the barbarian hordes and the state-sanctioned security apparatus that just happens to hate you and revel in the hellish state of anarcho-tyranny that we've all been enriched with. As Jay Stark said himself, So the thing about firearms and gun rights is... It is always a trade-off of safety and liberty. And for me personally, liberty is much more important in my life. Even if there is a criminal, who knows, that builds an FGC-9 and does something with it, I don't care. You know why? Maybe there's some other guy who liberates his hometown from invaders or something. It's all about what the people out there do. If they have bad intentions, my design won't stop them. And he's right. As we've seen with the acid attacks, stabbings and peaceful trucks all over the UK over the last few years, people who are determined to do violence will do violence. And stripping good law-abiding people of their means to defend themselves from that violence is just as evil as such acts of violence. If a man is at constant risk of drowning, you don't ban him from owning a life jacket. As a libertarian, I have a natural, very heavy inclination towards exercising the right to bear arms, and I don't really particularly care about how these arms are built or where they come from. After all, you've all seen what happens whenever anyone tries to shoot up a shop or a church in Texas. It does, oh, it does not go well for the shooter. Problems with gun violence very quickly solve themselves when the playing field is levelled. However, while I do have a lot of respect for Jay Stark's conviction, and I think that the FGC-9 is pretty fucking cool, and I absolutely would have one if I was allowed, let's just get this part over and done with, I do not encourage or condone any of you building one of these. Right? I do not encourage or condone any of you manufacturing firearms, even though I do absolutely recognise your right to do it, Unfortunately, the government sucks the fattest balls, and I don't want all of you going away to prison for a very long time. I need you here so that you can watch adverts on my channel. So, for legal reasons, I do not encourage or condone you manufacturing firearms in your goon cave. Isn't it funny how, in order to keep you safe, I'm asking you to not have a gun? That's, that's how fucking topsy-turvy the world's gotten.
I know that I've just gone on long enough about how based Jay Stark was for my lawyer to get very, very fucking nervous, but unless you're in the United States, this is me warning you not to 3D print firearms. A lot, and I mean a lot of jokes have had to be cut from this script because the feds are nuclear moulding like fucking Rol Trahada over the FGC9. So, don't go crying to me because you printed a fucking 3D printed gun without masking your IP properly or taking other OPSEC precautions and you are now facing a decade in prison. Right? It doesn't matter if you had no malicious intention with it or I just did this for funsies, I had no intention of even firing the fucking gun. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, they will put you in prison for a very, very long time. However, it's not like I can stop you, because you're all big boys and big girls and you can make your own decisions. And, for better or worse, the files are out there. And let's be real, it's the internet, they will always be out there. I make no endorsements or value judgments on their existence. Just do with that information what you will, and for the love of fuck, use a VPN. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's a joke. Don't do it. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody subscribe.